This lesson is part one of a review of exponential and logarithmic functions. In this video, we are going to learn how to solve exponential inequalities and logarithmic inequalities. Um, now, for these problems, we're given the graph. So um, there's a special thing that you can do. You can actually, if you have the graph, you can find the solution without doing any calculations at all. And I'm going to show you that. But I'll also show you how to solve it without the graph. All right. First of all, if your teacher or test administrator is foolish enough to give you the graph, let me show you how to just grab the answer right off the graph without doing any work at all. It's almost like cheating, but it's their fault for giving you the graph. <laughs> all right, you see this problem is really saying for what values of x is the function greater than 10. So when you see this symbol right here, you know, this uh, greater than sign, in terms of the graph, I want you to think above. For what x values is the graph above 10? Where's the function above 10? So in the graph, the 10 is this red line. Okay, so where's the graph above 10? Um, well, obviously it's above 10 right here, all right, where I just highlighted. Um, now, so it's, the question is, what are the x values here? Well, first look at the intersection point that they're giving us. So here's the point of intersection. Hold on, let me pick a better color. All right, here is the point of intersection. Um, what's the x value of that point? Well, that's right here, negative 1.66. So that's the cutoff. Um, now, hopefully you can see how this uh, highlighted part is sort of leaning to the left. So um, I could just read the uh, interval notation off of this, because um, the graph is coming in from the left and then stopping at negative 1.66. So that's going to be negative infinity to negative 1.66. Now, am I going to make this round or square to finish this off? It's going to be round, all right? There's no or equal to line. If this had been greater than or equal to 10, I would have made it a square bracket. So that's it. That's the answer. If you have the graph, you can just look at it. Oh, where is it above 10? Right here, negative infinity to x value, done. So now let's go back and pretend that they didn't give us the graph and do it the long way. All right, why would we do that? Just in case you don't get the graph, that's why. All right, so here's how you solve it without the graph. Um, you start by solving it as though it were an equation to find the critical value. So if this were an equation, the first thing we would do is we would rewrite this in logarithmic form. So in log form, we would have log base one-fourth, all right, and the 10 would come over here, and that would equal x. Now, we can evaluate this in our calculator using the change of base formula. Let's do log of 10 over log of one-fourth. Okay, so we'll do log of 10 over log of one-fourth. All right, so that's negative 1.66. So I've got negative 1.66 is equal to x. So that's our, our critical value. So let's go ahead and put that on a number line. OK, so here's negative 1.66. Um, and our critical value we will graph as a circle. So sometimes we do an open circle, sometimes a closed circle. Um, which will it be here? Open circle because it's not or equal to. It's just greater than 10. Um, so we have to figure out, is this going to be um, starting from here? Will the solutions be to the right of this critical value or to the left? OK. Um, and what we do is we use a test value. So um, 
let's see, for exponential functions, I like to use a test value of 0. And uh, so 0 is over here somewhere. So let's use 0 as a test value. So let's test x equals 0. If we do that, then um, what we have is 1 fourth to the 0 power, okay, we're going back to the original equation, is greater than 10. So let's see, is, the question is, is 0 a solution, yes or no? Um, well, 1 fourth to the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1. So that would say 1 is greater than 10. Um, no, 1 is not greater than 10. That means 0 is not a solution. Okay, so let's put a big no right there. Um, that means the solutions must be on the other side. Okay, so I'll put a yes over here because this, this is where the solutions must be. All right, so that means our solutions must be less than negative 1.66. Okay, so in other words, um, the solution set is from negative infinity to negative 1.66. Round parentheses, not a square bracket, um, for the same reason we have an open circle. It's not equal to. All right, so there is your answer. So that's how you would have to do it if they didn't give us the graph. But notice we get the same answer either way. Okay, um, now with logarithmic functions, it's the same thing um, with one exception. Logs cannot be negative. You can't take the log of a negative number. For that matter, uh, you can't take the log of zero either. So this x value has to be greater than zero. Um, so like on that previous problem where we had our solutions going from negative infinity to negative 1.66, um, nothing like that could ever happen with logs. All right. If if it's something that's heading towards negative infinity, it's going to have to start from zero and then go from there. All right. Um, anyway, just keep that in the back of your mind. So this symbol says um, the log base four of x is less than or equal to three. Okay. Um, so because we're talking about less than or equal to three. Um, when you see that symbol in terms of the graph, you need to think about the word below. Okay, less than would be below this line. So the three is this red line right here. So if we want to uh, be able to answer this immediately just by looking at the graph, we're just going to look at the graph and look for the part that's below three. So the part that's below three is this part that I'm highlighting in yellow. Okay. Um, let me emphasize the uh, cutoff point here is the intersection. And of course that's this point, uh, 64 to 3. Now we're just we're doing x values for the solution. So when you look at the 64 comma 3, um, the 64, the x value is going to wind up in the solution. So um, wh for what x values um, is this log function less than or equal to 3? Um, well, you see that, like I said, we can't go past zero, so it's going to be from zero to 64, okay? The x values are from zero to 64. So you can immediately just look at the graph and go zero to 64. Um, is it going to be a square bracket or round parentheses this time? Uh, this time it's going to be the square bracket because it's less than or equal to three and right at 64 is where it's equal to 3, so we want to include that value. So that's the answer right there, 0 to 64. Um, so that's how you can immediately get the answer from the graph without doing any calculations. Um, so once again, let me show you how to solve it if they did not give you the graph. All right, so if I want to rewrite this so x is by itself, um, I want to rewrite this in exponent form. So in exponent form, you start with the base, okay, so there's the base, and then um, the 3 is going to end up over here as the exponent, and um, we're just finding the critical value, so let's, we're pretending that this was an equation and not an inequality for now. Um, so the x is going to wind up over here. 
So um, this is how this would end up as an equation in exponent form. So of course, 4 to the third power is 64. So that gives us our critical value of x equals 64. So let's go ahead and put that on a number line. Okay, so here's 64 way over here. Okay, so um, as far as this critical value, should I do an open circle or a closed circle? All right, this one's going to be a closed circle because we want to know where is it less than or equal to 3. So right at 64 is where it's going to be equal to 3. So we'll include that value as an open circle. So we need to figure out, are we going to be to the left of the 64, or will we be to the right of the 64? Now before it even comes up as, as an issue, um, when you're dealing with logarithms, I need you to remember that logarithms cannot be 0 or negative. They have to stay positive. All right? They're a very happy mathematical construct. So if 0 is right here, okay, over here somewhere, for logarithms you have to view this almost like it's a brick wall. Okay, So the logarithm is not getting past this. Okay, so this is like a brick wall. So um, if the function winds up uh, coming to the left, we're not going to say negative infinity to 64. We're going to say 0 to 64. If it winds up going to the right, that's fine. It can go to the right forever. We can, we can say 64 to infinity. All right, um, for logarithms, cannot be 0 or negative. So anyway, we have to do a test value to see um, what's going on on the left or the right. Um, for logarithms, my favorite value to test is a value of 1, because uh, that's the easiest one. Okay, so I'm going to use a test value of 1, Okay, which is going to be over here. So if I do a test value of 1, we have to use the original equation. So we're testing um, an x value of 1. And that would look like this. Log base 4 of 1 is less than or equal to 3. Um, well, I like to use 1 because that's uh, something we can do in our head. We're asking ourselves, 4 to what power gives you 1? Well, anything to the 0 power is 1. So that makes this 0. So this is saying 0 is less than or equal to 3. So when is this a true statement? Is 1 a solution to this inequality? And the answer is yes, uh, because 0 is less than 3. Um, so that means 1 is a solution. So this is the yes side where all the solutions live. This is the no side over here. So um, that means I'm going to start to draw my arrow going to the left. But I'm not going to just make an arrow indicating that this is going to go to the left forever. Like I said before, logarithms cannot be 0 or negative. So it's going to go right up to 0 and stop at 0. And in fact, we'll need an open circle at 0 showing that it can't actually be 0. Okay, so the inequality, um, the number line, is going to look like this. And the solution set is going to look like this in interval notation. 0 to 64. And we'll use a square bracket to include the 64. All right, so that is how you would solve this um, logarithmic inequality if they did not give you the graph. But looking back, that's the same answer that we were able to come up with from the graph in 10 seconds. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. Uh, on the next video, we're going to pick up from here and uh, learn about these word problems, real world problems that involve exponential and logarithmic functions. Right? Learning about money, mostly.